The Mandalorian is a solid show with an interesting main character, so I decided to translate that character into D&D 5th Edition. Before we get started, here are the rules. Number 1, no homebrew. Number 2, point five for stats. This build will be for the Eberron setting instead of the Forgotten Realm setting as my other builds were, but if your DM allows you to use the Artificer and other settings, you could easily translate it to those instead. For race, we're going to do Variant Human with the Heavy Armored Feet. This is to give Mando access to his iconic Beskar, as the class we choose for him does not have access to Heavy Armor. Class will be Artificer. One of the features we'll get as Artificer is Magical Tinkering. You can use this to make a variety variety of props that he has in the show as well as things that would make sense for a bounty hunter to have. You can do holographic wanted posters or even recreate pucks, the bounty pucks in certain ways. You could also do recordings of instructions from the clients for the bounties on like a voxophone type thing from Bioshock. You could do uh, a sound distraction thing with the continuously emits an odor or nonverbal sound. You can make like a loud noise, almost grenade type thing that you throw as a distraction. Really the possibilities are endless and a lot of these stuff seems like gadgets that Mando would have. Next for his artificer infusions, um, the first one will be the, the enhanced defense infusion which will give a plus one to his armor and this is to reflect the effectiveness of his Beskar steel. Number two will be goggles of night to sort of reflect he isn't necessarily a night vision but he does use the different functions on his visor in the episode with the younger bounty hunter. Um, you could let's see if your DM allows you to incorporate the goggles of night into your helmet as opposed to having the goggles on, or I guess you could wear the goggles underneath the helmet. The third one will be the enhanced arcane focus, which, which represents the deadliness of his disintegration rifle. And finally, it'll be sending stones. Sending stones aren't really anything specific, but I thought it sort of helped get that feel of like the comms they have in Star Wars. Obviously they're not as effective. But I could see Mando, if he worked with a squad of other people, using sending stones as comms in between the party. The subclass will be Artillerist, which gives him access to the Eldritch Cannon feature, which gives him a few gadgets, like guns and turret type things, that the flamethrower he uses in the show, the other stuff he doesn't necessarily use in the show, but... They're definitely tools that a Mandalorian would use. The flamethrower is obvious, it's his flamethrower. You could see if your DM allows you to make it wrist mounted and when you use the Eldritch Cannon feature, you just activate it. Or you might have to make it like some sort of small gun. Or you could make it a turret if you want it. Any of these work, you have lots of options. And I think pretty much all of them fit, fit what a Mandalorian would do. Next, we have the Force Ballista, which he doesn't have anything like that in the show, but weapons of that nature do exist in Star Wars. For example, the LJ-50 Concussion Rifle from one of the Battlefront games, I believe. I have some art of uh, what you could make this weapon look like if you summoned it to fit the Eberron thing more because I don't want you to just make him have Star Wars blasters and shit. I'm showing the Star Wars stuff to show the Star Wars equivalent, but you should flavor them so they fit in the D&D setting. The Star Wars blasters do not fit. And lastly, this is something that doesn't exist in Star Wars. But I could see it existing in one of the video games. It's the protector, which gives um, people around you temporary hit points. I would flavor this as like shields, either a bubble shield, like in the picture of the, the Rodian or Rodian, I don't know how to say it, with the bubble shield around him. The next one is the shield generators that, that appear in Star Wars. You could flavor them as looking like the shields from KOTOR, Knights of the Old Republic. I also put a picture of Symmetra's ult because... That's what I picture it being, only more like steampunky for the Eberron aesthetic. It like being like a generator that gives everyone shields. They can either be invisible or they can be like an outline or like a bubble looking thing like the Rodian has in that picture. Artillerist also gives you access to some spells. Um, the ones at level 3 are the Thunder Wave and Shield spell. The Thunder Wave is very similar to the Force Cannon, and I think that having it as the rifle would fit the LJ-50 Concussion Rifle with the, the picture I showed, if you wanted to make it look like that, or if you want to make it look like another steampunky weapon. And then the Shield spell, 
You can use it as a Mandalorian shield, like in the Clone Wars, or you could do like a KOTOR type shield, or the shields I was talking about. Both these spells are very similar to the Eldritch Cannons. I'm not going to go too much into reflavoring them. For cantrips, take Shocking Grasp and Firebolt. Shocking Grasp is to represent the prongs at the end of his Disintegration Rifle, and Firebolt is to represent either his Blaster or his Disintegration Rifle, or both. I put a picture of Disintegration Rifle, and then I also put some stuff on how you can reflavor it. You could reflavor it as a cane that has like a staff at the end. It would be four-pronged instead of two-pronged. You could have sort of like a two-ended staff, like Lux has in um, League of Legends that I have to the right. Um, that, that has the, the, you know, the shocking thing on both ends. And then if you wanted to do like some sort of sidearm, I put like a, like an old timey flare gun, the firebolt, if you wanted to do it that way as his blaster, like I said, reflavor these don't, don't make them all guns necessarily, which is why I decided to go with a staff for these because guns are kind of boring and I think there's more creative ways to do it. So these are some options and now you can reflavor them or you can think of something on your own. Here are some of the spells that you can prepare as an artificer because they prepare spells. So alarm spell, there's like hidden trip wires in Star Wars. You can make them more old timey looking. Those are an example of some hidden trip wires from like a Star Wars toy. I don't know if toys are canon, but I'm sure laser trip wires are canon at some point. Absorb elements, you can represent as like you absorbing the energy with some sort of thing you have. Maybe like the, the Mandalorian shield or one of the shields from KOTOR. I keep bringing up the shields, but that's because they keep being relevant. The catapult spell, I haven't seen Rebels, but I guess Ezra has like a little wrist slingshot. You can make it a slingshot like that, or you can make it like, like an Ewok, just like a regular slingshot. Although, unlike Ezra's, it's not shooting energy, it's just shooting a random fucking object at him, which is kind of funny. So you can make this sort of, like, force thing, like, it's, like, invisible, and you, you load it up on your wrist, and you, like, press a button, and it, like, pulls it back and launches it. Or you can make it a basic-ass slingshot. I, I don't know, it's your decision. Next, we have Cure Wounds. Um, there's a lot of some med packs in Star Wars. I think it would be fun to make it a syringe. A lot of like the buff spells could be syringes which could represent the stims that were in knights of the old republic which isn't canon anymore but candorus one of the mandalorians in knights of the old republic he's always using stims because mandalorians are about brutal efficiency so your wounds and other buffs that i'll get into next could all be some kind of like needles he has on like a tool belt and when he helps an ally he just like fucking stabs them with the stem or stabs himself with the stem detect magic can be like a vision thing he has on his helmet to detect you know magical stuff the sky self does not fit for a mandalorian at all i probably wouldn't even use that spell it doesn't really fit for any mandalorian let alone they're in the mandalorian in the show expedition expeditious retreat also be a stim and so could false life false life especially because it, it almost reminds me of like how does how like bugs are where it like gives you a bonus but false life is like necromantic necromatic and it's like at a cost so you inject it and it makes you stronger but maybe it has some sort of downside you could ask that for role play um purposes you could actually give them downsides for his stims expeditious retreat is another like almost drug thing because it makes you faster it's like the adrenal uh, atrocity um Knights of the Old Republic. Fairy Fire is, like, could be a targeting thing. Some sort of, I don't know, some sort of thing you scan them with that gives them, like, outline. I don't know if it would work as, I guess it wouldn't be a targeting thing, because it, like, goes off, but it could be some sort of grenade you throw that, like, lights everyone and makes them easier to shoot. Identify can just be you just working and, like, examining something. Feather Fall could be, like, a parachute. Jump. Though it doesn't, it could be like minor jetpack. The jetpacks that they have in the Mandalorian are way more powerful than just jumping further. But you could have like a jump pack. Um, if you've played Halo 3, the Brutes, they have jump packs where like they can't hover, but it makes them like jump further and higher. It could be something like that where it's just like a minor thruster or it could be another thing in a syringe where you where it just makes you like jump faster like some sort of steroid thing long strider could be another stim type thing i keep bringing this up the stims i don't know but the reason why is i don't know if it's currently canon 
But in Knights of the Old Republic, Mandalorians use stims a lot. Um, Candorus would make them for you. I, I don't know if it's canon anymore. I don't know what's canon. But I think that having a bunch of like cool steampunk syringes that he's constantly doing would be cool. If I have food and drink could just be use you like analyzing it to get rid of the poison sanctuary be like you putting i i don't know what sanctuary would, sanctuary would be it would be some sort of thing you put on an ally so they don't get hurt i i i don't know snare would just be like a trap and then for stats finally strength will be 15 he gets the bonus from the heavy armor feat he needs that high strength to use his best car armor both in the show and in this so it's a good thing we have that plus one from the heavy armor feat this is 10 he is kind of dexterous in the show but i just made it 10 because other stats are more important con is 14 can which can represent both his hardiness and his fence from his armor intelligence is 16 because that's his spell casting modifier so it's more just his trade knowledge and using all his gadgets because you know we don't really get an idea of how smart he is in the show, but this is purely for mechanical reason. Wisdom is 12 to represent his observedness. Really, it would probably be higher if we could make it, but 12 is fine. You know, he's more observant than the average person. And charisma is 8 because he barely talks and is not, like, a very social or charismatic person. Background, we're going to take Mercenary Veteran. Um, because this is on Eberron, he can be part of the Finders Guild or work for House Dra Dr Dr Drask. I don't know how to say it. Backstory works out really well because in the show he was killed by battle droids. Well, his, his, he wasn't killed. His family was killed by battle droids. In Eberron, the Warforged were created recently, so his family could have been killed by Warforged when he was younger. You know, he doesn't like droids in the show, he cannot like Warforged in Eberron, which could lead to some interesting conflict if you have a Warforged party member that he has to work with for whatever reason. I think that works really well. The Finders Guild, you could have like almost a, um, the Finders Guild, there could be like a subdivision that, that has a similar Mandalorian culture. I think that Eberron really, really lines up well with his backstory because of all of these elements. You could, again, invent your own section in the Eberron background guide. It has a guide for making your own inquisitive agency, which is what bounty hunting, the detective stuff, and one of those could be the Mandalorian group, and that's what he's from. Um, so really, it's Eberron is perfect for this. You get a lot of proficiencies as an artificer. Some of them you automatically get, some of them I took. So proficiencies, we have Smith's Tools, Woodcarver's Tools, Steve's Tools, Tinker's Tools, Land Vehicles, Dragon Chess, Athletics, Investigation, Perception, and Persuasion, which is from background. I normally would not give him Persuasion, because he's not persuasive, and Survival. So you can just flavor this as him having all these tools, you know, obviously... I would be very surprised if Din Djarin started fucking wood carving on the wood carving wood carving on the razor's crest, but I mean you you get the proficiencies, so it's just something you have to work around. And it's not Star Wars; it's Eberron. So maybe in Eberron, Din Djarin does like wood carving. For equipment, we'll take scale mail, weapons don't matter, light crossbow, thieves' tools, and a dungeoneer's pack. I have some images on how you can reflavor his grappling hook, which is a little tricky. Um, there's really no rules for like a propelled grappling hook, except for there is a module called Gangs of Waterdeep, which was an open Adventures League module. This is a deep cut, I know. And there was a grapple gun in that, but that was only used to reel stuff in. If your DM allows you to have just a grappling hook on a gun, I don't see why he wouldn't. Then these are some things that you can reflavor. Unfortunately, this is technically homebrew, despite the fact that there's quasi-official stuff from Wizards of the Coast. Um, but here are some images on what you can make it look like.
Well, that's it for this terrible video. Thanks for watching. If you want to watch some other terrible videos of mine, you can click the screen right here. I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed and liked and comment and, you know, all that shit, whatever. Ring that bell. Do whatever the fuck you want. I don't care.